According to historical documents in the Hung King or Lak King's dynasty, Viet people did have their own land. They knew how to flow water into the field, build earth edge to keep water in and let water out based on tides. During that time, paddy fields and people earning their life were near rivers and valleys with streamlines. Life was also peaceful. The king managed well both in terms of political and financial issues to provide a healthy life to his people. Therefore, the legend was left to the next generations. The people had agriculture-based and honest life. That peaceful time marked a legend in the history and that king became a saint in memory of the Viet people. People not only considered him as the great king, but also worshipped him as an agricultural god. Therefore, every beginning of spring, when the first day of new farming starts, they hold an inviting ceremony to welcome the god to his temple, wishing his grants for a high-yield harvest, a happy and healthy life. Then, on March the 10th, agricultural calendar, when the paddy fields are fully grown, people hold the ritual ceremony on the Hung Mountain to commemorate his contributions and pray for rain during the summer to provide water for their paddy fields for a good harvest. The festival on March the 10th is held full of fun, such as chess games, wrestling, swinging, folk singing, chong kwan singing, and swan singing. On that day, swan guilds in Kim Duk sing the welcome song for the king in the upper temple, telling the stories about Hung kings in public areas, du tian singing on the land in front of the temple gate. Swan singing and its practices are formed to worship the founder king, who is also known as the first agricultural god of the Viet people living in Van Lang. This art was formed even before people in Phu Tok knew how to build village communal houses. At that time, people living in four villages, Tet, Phu Duk, Kim Doi, Kim Duk Commune, and An Tai, Phuong Lo Commune, still sang the king worship songs in small and simple shrines. It is said that about 2,000 years ago, three brothers of the Hung King, on their way to find land for their castle, took a rest during noon in a forest nearby Phu Duc village. They saw the kids who were herdsmen playing, wrestling and singing. The kings asked them to come over and taught some songs to the children. To commemorate this event, village people built the shrine on that land and called it Lai Len Shrine. These songs then later are called Swan Singing. The legendary story about Swan Singing is formed to explain the original circumstances, the founder, the performance of this kind of art in the lives of four Swan villages. Many scholars have considered these villages as the birthplace of Swan singing. As early as the beginning of the 17th century, villages in Phu Tok started building village communal houses, which were the cultural community centers and worshiping places for the village guardian spirit. Every spring and fall time, the ceremonies are held at village communal houses to pray and worship to the gods. These are the times for Swan guilds to be invited for performance by the village communal houses located along the riversides of the Lo, Tao and Hong River of Van Lang. Presently, these are Duan Hung, Phu Ning, Lam Tao, Tam Nom District, Viet Chi City, Phu Tha Province and Lup Tak and Vinh Thuong District, Vinh Phuc Province.
Normally, at this month, we practice from the 6th to the 25th of the last month of the year. On the first day of the new year, we visit Lai Len Shrine, then the Chung Communal House. On the third day of the new year, we have performance at this Tet Communal House, and then we can have a break on the 4th and 5th. We move to Khao Mai on the 6th, then come back to Phuong An, Tu Du, and so for the rest of the month. As regulation, Swan guilds have to perform on the first day of the new year for the king at the shrine to invite the king to enjoy the show performed by the village people. In the morning of the first day of the new year, we brought offering fruits and betel areca nut to worship the king at the shrine, then invited him to listen to our singing at the communal house in the evening. After completing all offering procedures, the carriage combined of eight young, unmarried village men who have not had a funeral in their family in the past year and escorted by prenons, parasols, drums and gongs to conduct a king-carrying ritual from the shrine to the village communal house. There must be four young, unmarried girls walking under the carriage to sing Phu Zha. When the carriage arrives at the village communal house, people complete all required ritual procedures. Then, in the evening, Swan guilds come back to the village communal house to perform the king ritual singing. After these singing nights, the Swan guilds are on the way to perform, which means they have to travel as tourists, since Swan singing and singers are not profit-making careers. They look forward to having the spring, then they can sing for the king and ask for his support for a peaceful and prosperous year. With more than 400 years of traveling performance, Swan guilds have tightened the community relations, the Swan singing art with traditional folk arts at village communal houses. Therefore, they can modify traditional dancing to be Swan dance moves to meet the demand of God worshipping and love exchange singing between young people in host villages and swand guilds. The Chong Kwan singing in Duk Bak to welcome the swand singers on the new year is a proof for this argument. According to the regulations in Duk Bak village, on the sixth day of the new year, young village men wearing the carrying uniforms, white clothes, red turban on the head, red silk belt and drums on the back will go to the village port to pick up swan singers and take them to the village communal house. When the boats arrive, swan singers are welcomed by drum sounds and greeting songs from the village men. Then they receive the drum handed by these men and all the way to the village communal house they exchange songs for hours.
Phuong E Ki, Tien Lu, Khao Mai, Thang Mai, Kho Thik, Cam Doi, Tu Du, Hoang Chui, So, Tay Kok, Nong Chang, Du Lo, and Huong Non Villages all practice greeting Swan Guilds at village communal houses. Then the guild leader and male Swan instrumentalists are invited to have meals with the village authorities while the female singers are hosted by the village officiating priest family. The friendly and warm welcoming attitude offered by village people to Swan Guilds has created a tight and close relationship which leads to mutual responsibilities for holding king worshipping singing at the new year every year. This kind of relationship is named twinning relationship, known as Ket Nuok Nia. There are many legendary stories that come from this practice. The Lei Swan Lan princess once passed by Phu Ning village and heard the songs sung by the village people. She loved these songs. Later, she was the master of Tian Tao Pagoda in Huang Non village. When she passed away, she was worshipped as a goddess. Therefore, every year Huang Non village hosts the festival at the village communal house and Swan Guild in Phu Ning has to come over to serve the singing for worship. Or the story in Fuduk village. They sent people to Tu Zhu village to make wood for building the village communal house. Since then, people in Tu Zhu village had many accidents in their life. They had to carry out ritual practices asking for God's help. Luckily, Swan Guild in Fuduk visited and performed ritual singing. After that, people in the village had a better life and the practice of inviting Swan Guilds to perform on the festival at the village communal house became village regulation. Every year, they bring six girls and six men to come over. All the girls are single. Every house hosts two men and three houses host four persons. It happens every year. Swan singing takes three days, from the 9th to the 12th. The twinning relation legendary story replaces written and stone documents reflecting the rights of singing at village communal houses. Moreover, this legend creates the spiritual glue linking the sentiment and responsibilities within a community between Swan guilds and villages. It has more enforcement power than any written document. Therefore, during the last 400 years, there has been no village in twinning relation forgetting to pick up Swan Guild in the festival of the village communal house. And Swan Guilds perform their singing for worshipping the gods, not with profit-making purpose. This wonderful and closed relationship has created the culture of Swan region and the art of Swan singing in Hung King ritual practices in every village communal house in the former Van Lang, presently Phu Tho province. Swan groups come here to perform in village communal houses are Phu Ning's then Kim Doi's and An Thai's. The first performance in Swan Singing Night at village communal houses is Welcome God, Wishing Happiness Singing. This is the inviting song for the great king, Hung King, and other gods, asking them to grant happiness to village people and allow them to enter the singing festival. The first song includes four tunes, Zhao Chong, Zhao Fao, Te Nyang, and Dong Dam. First of all, the Swan Guild leader, 
fires the firecrackers to open the show. After being done, singers and instrumentalists sing and dance two tunes, Zhao Chong and Zhao Fao. There are two tunes, but are sang as a medley. The first one is sung to praise Chong Kum, the rice drum. The frame of the drum is a long and pipe shape with two heads covered with leather. The drum has two sounds. Low sound is tum, and high sound is vong. In order to create these two sounds, there is a need to have cooked rice covering the drum head. Therefore, the rice drum and the sound of the rice drum beat by Swan Guild in the festival at the communal house will represent the wishing of people for a peaceful and prosperous life. The next one is sung to praise the sound of firecracker fired on the first day of the new year to expel all the evil spirits and let people safely enter the festival. The sound represents the wishing words offered by Swan Guild to the kings, the lords, and the village to have a year of better life, full of paddy, and success in study and career, and happy family, full of children. After Zhao Chong, Zhao Fao are the two Ternang and Dong Dam tunes. Ternyang is the incense offering song for the great king altar asking him to grant happiness to village people. The scents of cinnamon and many other herbs are mixed with the poem, songs and dancing movements performed by Swan Guild are the wishing and feeling of the village people offering to the king and gods. Dong Dam is the singing to confirm the presence of the great king who comes back and stays at the God Palace inside the village communal house. And it shows the role and responsibility of Swan singing in the festival night at the village communal house. The art performed by female singers who whenever see village festival then will come to dance. Dong Dam closes the Nyang Tang singing performance for the next Kwa Kak singing. The next performance is Kwa Kak singing. Kwa Kak is the poem music enjoyed by village notables during the festivals at the village communal house. The terminology of Kwa Kak combines two words, Kwa and Kak. Kwa is the singing tune and kak is the singing performance way. There are 14 kwa kak, but during festivals at village communal houses, the singers only perform the 12 following kwa kak. Nyan ngam kak, chang mai kak, ngu tiao kak, doi zai kak, hoi lian kak, swan toy kak, ha toy kak, tu toy kak, dong toy kak, tu mua kak, tuyen cheo kak, The 14 Kwa Kak can be listed in four categories. The first category 
is the Quark Act telling the stories about historical or legendary figures in both Vietnam or China? They are Kiu Zhang Kak, Hoi Lien Kak, and Choi Do Kak. The second category is Quark Act praising gods and saints who are honored by bringing about the happiness and prosperity to village people. They are Nhan Ngam Kak, Chang Mai Kak, Tuyen Chao Kak, and Doi Zai Kak. The third category is Kwa Kak showing the emotion reflecting the seasons of spring, summer, fall, and winter. The frequent words such as warm spring breath, swallow messenger, expecting turtle, inquiring cicada, corn leaves flying outside the front door, the blowing wind carries the beating sound of pestle, and so on, are these typical standard words. They are from Swan Toy Kak, Ha Toy Kak, Tu Toy Kak, Dong Toy Kak, and Tu Mua Kak. The fourth category is Kwa Kak telling the story about agricultural work, such as fishing, collecting firewood, farming, tending, and four careers, public servants, farmers, business, and artifacts. These are the main and most popular careers in Vietnam during the Lai So at the 15th century. They are Ngu Tiêu Kang Muk Kak and Tu Zan Kak. As custom, in the beginning of December, Swan Guilds have to gather in the Guild Leader's house to rehearse before the performance trips. They have to prepare the offering and go to Lai Len Shrine to sing asking the Great King to grant good health for dancing and sweet voice for every member of the group. In this ritual performance, they have to sing Kiel Gang Kak and Choi Zou Kak which are the singing songs especially for key festival of Swan Guilds. Therefore, people normally know that there are 14 Kwa Kak. In the 17th century in Fu Tao, Chinese characters started to become popular in society. It was the factor to bring about the new demand. The need of enjoying poems and art with mandarins, teachers and students in musical art. Upon this new demand, people then composed new songs based on worship songs such as Zhao Chong, Zhao Fao, Te Nang and Dong Dan, which later was called Kwa Kang. Kwakak was founded, to some extent, to meet the demands from mandarins, teachers and students. 
Therefore, it became important singing phase in Swan singing nights at village communal houses. The name Kuk Ding Mon, which replaces the name of Swan singing, seems to appear at the same time. Its purpose is to confirm the role of words, meaning in this kind of art. After the phase of singing 12 Kwa Kak, the Di Choi Burm Gai is followed. Bermgai means girlfriend. Di Choi Bermgai means singing with girlfriend. People use this song to title this singing phase as a message to the audience. The great king and gods granted us love and happiness. We have to sincerely thank them and take advantage of these favors by offering incense to the altar. Praying the gods grant us more strong men to protect our village and our country as the spirit of Kolding festival. The beginning of this singing phase is the Choi Bum Gai, Cheo Len Ke Bui Hat Hua, and Duong Di Chen Sui Zui Khe songs. These three songs are sung by six Swan singers and six young village men and performed as a medley. This performance changes the solemn atmosphere of the previous singing phase, Hat Ngang Tan and Kwa Kak. Folk artists divide the night performance into two phases. The phase of the singing with the formation in vertical lines and the phase of the singing with the formation in horizontal lines. The singing with the formation in vertical lines includes the melodies of welcoming gods and kwa kak. The singing with the formation in horizontal lines consists of the love exchange melodies between Swan singers and village men. Only the singers and the instrumentalists of guilds can perform the singing with the formation in vertical lines, while Swan singers and village men perform the singing with the formation in horizontal lines together. It seems this is the most appropriate division. In the phrase of the singing with the formation in horizontal lines, village men can experience the time of becoming artists and show their aptitude in public, which motivates them to show all of their improvisation ability through their response to professional singers in love exchange singing. As a result, this phase is the most welcomed by local young men and women in village festivals. 
Next are the songs Xin Huay, Do Huay, Do Chu, Bo Bo Dance, Moi Zui Singing, Dum Singing, Kai Huay, and Mo Ka. Dum singing includes dum ter singing and dum nem singing, dum throwing singing. Dum ter singing has the lyrics of sending best wishes to kings and villages. In performance, four singers stand in front of altars and hold paper fans in front of their chests. When they sing, they do not dance and people do not play drums and clappers. Dum Nem singing is the love exchange game between Swan singers, village notables and village men. Village notables and village men have to prepare some pieces of square cloth to pack betel leaves, arica nuts, coins, mirrors and cones, which are called Dum Packs. People have to make Dum Wings around packs. People both spin Dum Wings and sing. To begin with, one village notable holds dumb wings and sings introduction sentences before giving dumb to singers. Singers receive dumb and throw it to village notables or village men. The performance is done in this way with love exchange, teasing and playful singing style. The funniest point is when singers throw dumb to local seniors. These men have to put coins into dumb and sing some sentences before throwing it back to singers. When some smart singers discover that there is no money in the dumb, they tease these men with singing and throw the dumb back to them. Dumb are sometimes cast to wealthy men. Although they have no money, they do not know to sing. Therefore, they put money into dumb and ask local men to sing for them. In such situations, villagers have chances to laugh buoyantly. Bobo dances are inserted into love exchange songs. Bobo dances are very popular in God worshipping singing in the village communal houses of Viet people in the Midlands and the Northern Delta. People do not know the origin of Bobo dances and in what festivals of Viet people they are performed. People only know that they are performed in many God worship festivals. However, each place performs them differently. Borbot dance in Swan singing imitates the dances of Swan guilds. For example, turning palms upwards, folding hands and then unfolding hands, pushing arms towards the left or right like a boat rowing movement. At the same time, flexing the legs slightly with the movements illustrating the actions of sawing wood, sewing, planting trees or shooting with a bow and arrows. Bobo dance in Swan singing has quick rhythm and beautiful movements which are not affected by rituals. As a result, it is welcomed as the dance in community activities.
In the phase of swan singing, with a formation in horizontal lines, there is a medley of love exchange singing and dancing, called Xin Hui Do Chu. This medley includes three songs, Xin Hui, Do Hui, and Do Chu. Sinhui is the tricky riddles of village men, used to tease and test the responsibility of swan singers. They ask singers for flowers in boxes, vases, pecks, basins, and even braziers. Swan singers agree, but with a condition that those flowers have to blossom, which never happens. After Sin Hui melody is Do Hui. Do Hui is the lecture on flower seasons and flower varieties. Through the love exchange singing, village men and swan singers send audiences the farming schedule of flower varieties and flower seasons. In the time when the script was not popular, this farming schedule was very valuable in rural life. Unluckily, people cannot remember many flower varieties in that farming schedule, Do Hui, at present. The last melody is Do Chu asking the riddles about words. The main purpose of giving riddles is not asking singers words in love exchange style. In the past, a few singers could learn hand script in the rural area because the society allocated keeping houses to women. Only men could read books and recite poems. The purpose of asking riddles was to encourage the fondness for learning of villagers. As a result, when villages organized Do Chu singing, people wrote characters on boards and gave to Confucian scholars to raise them up so that villagers could know words. Village men would sing to explain the meanings of the words at that time.
Dochu singing provides the strong development of Confucianism in Lei Dynasty. The interesting point of Dochu's singing is the riddles about words are closely connected to agricultural life, including daily used equipment, working tools, and the things related to the spiritual life of wet rice cultivation villages. Chu melody finishes when cocks crow at 4 a.m. At that time, mandarins and seniors get tired at villages' communal houses. Guild leaders or drum-beating mandarins will beat the drum strongly to signal that singers can perform now to invite people for wine. The wine cups invited by Swan singers are lucky wine. The people drinking it will live long. As a result, Swan singers often invite the people, implementing sacrifice and being seniors. Drinking the wine cups from Swan singers is an honor. Therefore, nobody refuses them. In the meantime, Swan singers wait for this chance to receive the lucky money for congratulating the new year from drinkers. Moisio singing is the lullaby melody in Ka Chu and is imported to swan singing. Folk artists make lullaby singing become swan singing by performing it with singing and wine inviting dance of swan singing. The melody is kept the same, but the singing style changes. People ignore the singing regulations of Ka Chu, namely no tremolo, no accompaniment, no drum playing and no clapper playing. Singers can sing with their natural voice. What changes Ka Chu lullaby most in Swan singing is dance. Dance becomes the main art. Swan singers are required to dance very skillfully. For example, their bodies and hands have to be lissom. They are not allowed to let wine pour out of the cups, although they hold the cups full of wine, turn their bodies upward or rotate their hands. With the role of inviting people for wishing them longevity at the beginning of the year, many villagers often request Swan singers to perform this melody many times in the night parties at village communal houses. Swan singers will not normally refuse because they want to receive a lot of lucky money, which wishes them good health and wealth. To finish Swan performance nights, singers and village men will perform two melodies, Kai Hui 
and Mo Ka. Kai Hui and Mo Ka are the most welcomed melodies by village men in Swan performance nights. Performing these melodies, they can sing love expression sentences and perform manly dances, for example, groping, catching, touching, or pressing, and then they find chances to touch Swan singers. People make the same formation in Kai Hui and Mo Ga. In Kai Hui, singers hold the hands of each other to create five petals surrounding village men, who stand in the middle of the circle and are considered the stamens. While Swan singers form a circle as a net, encircling village men, fishes, in the middle of the Mo Ga. When performing Kai Hui. Petals sometimes close as if they embrace the stamens, or sometimes they bloom for the stamens rising upright, and then the petals gradually close. It looks like the scene attracts bees and butterflies. When performing Mo Ka, singers clap their hands and sing the sentence La Vong Vong Tap, Vong Tap Tam Vong. The lyrics imitate the sound of the rice drum, as if the challenge of males shows their ability of drawing up the net. The young men stamp, grope, and sing, "Dang liek, hai la dang le, gong zam ang kung ang de ziek zo." After finishing the singing sentence, they rush forward to embrace the singers. The singers promptly ward them off. In an instant, the singers turn into fish. Young village men turn into the fishers. That means the fish changes into fisher, and the net changes into the fish. The inflexible logic, fish must be the fish, net must be the net, is broken. The challenging lyric of the net, the singers, is sung, la vong vong tap, vong tap tam vong. The young men stamp their feet, swing their arms, and rush forward to grope or touch the net. The tune is performed more and more ebulliently. The most ebullient moment is when the singers and young men do not have enough breath to sing. The villagers will sing, and their voice resound in the whole village communal house for the singers and young men to continue dancing. Mo Ka is the most ancient tune of the Viet people, handed down up to now. It does not only have the value of collective singing, dancing art, but it also has a lot of historical, cultural value in the Viet in Van Lang. Ending the tune is to catch the fish to offer the deity. Depending on the custom of each village communal house. The fish caught by the performer of Mo Ka to offer the deity will be a male or a female. Singing is mainly composed based on three-note or four-note scale. Its melody is common and does not have many ornamental notes. 
It can be considered as the geometry layout in the ancient pottery. The singing voice closes to the speaking voice, and it does not have a close regulation of vocal music. In order to perform a song of swan singing in the phase of singing with the formation in vertical lines, people divide the song into two parts: the performance of the instrumentalists and the performance of the singer. The instrumentalist performs the lyrics, and the main melody of the song is called as "Hat Dua Kak." When singing "Hat Dua Kak," he must stand neatly beside the pillar of the village communal house, in front of the altar, holding the book in hand without dancing. Singers stand in horizontal lines opposite the altar, dancing and singing. With the repeat of the words at the end of the sentence or of the phrase of the instrumentalist song, sometimes in some songs the singer sings an expletive phrase. This expletive one replaces for the musical phrase which links the singing phrases of the instrumentalist. Such a way of singing of the singer is called hat don kak. The voice of don kak of the singer. Is often separate from the voice of duokak of the instrumentalist at the fourth interval. People do not use definite instruments in Hatswan. They only use a small drum covered with leather on the two drum heads and some bamboo clappers. In performance, the player beats the drum and clappers in accordance with the rhythm of melodies. When singing at the village communal house. There is one more big drum called a chom kai, or chom ding, a ding drum. It is put at the place of the village notables. The drum frame is 60 centimeters in height. The drum head is about 40 centimeters in width. The person who plays the ding drum is also called the kum cho. However, the drum is only played at the beginning of a tune. In order for the instrumentalists and singers to prepare before the performance, or it is played to end excessive actions while young men are singing and dancing with Swan singers. In Swan performance, dancing plays an important role. It creates a specific mode of performance for this kind of art. There is hardly a tune that does not have dance while performing, like the music. Dancing in Hat Swan just takes place in some model movements. Depending on the content of the lyrics, such model will change to be suitable. If someone is not the insider or is not an expert on Swan singing, he or she will find it difficult to recognize the change of dancing movements models. The most recognizable feature is the movement of formation. Beginning is always a horizontal lineup or two vertical ones. From that, it gradually turns into two horizontal lineup, four horizontal lineup, and into different circle lineup. When the lineup changes, singers still keep intact, or changes the movement of the hands and the legs just a little. Maybe due to the above factors of music and dance. Researchers today list Swan singing into the most ancient musical culture of the Viet people. That thinking can be true, but there is not real historical evidence or thorough researching works on musicology that make us be still in doubt. However, Viet people have been aware of their origin and ancestors since very early times. The proof is evident in mythologies as well as worshiping forms of those mythological characters at temples in the pre-Li dynasty. It is probable that Swan singing was born at the same time with the appearance of the temples. If it is right, Swan singing has penetrated into the people in Van Lang land for 1,500 years, with many ups and downs. Development and self-perfection, singing for expressing gratitude to great king.
Nowadays, getting the high support of the whole community, Swan singing will be restored. Hát xoan là một cái nghệ thuật rất độc đáo. Nó có cái không gian riêng, có niêm luật chặt chẽ và là một cái nghệ thuật đa nghệ thuật, bao gồm cả hát, cả múa, cả diễn. Chúng tôi định ra một cái kế hoạch cho 10 năm, hoạch định được một cái chính sách bảo vệ tôn tạo hát xoan trong một cái phạm phạm vi dài. Đi cùng với cái việc xây dựng cái đội ngũ nghệ nhân, với việc quảng bá nội dung, với việc đưa vào trường học, thì cái việc xây dựng các cái cơ sở vật chất, tức là tái tạo lại cái không gian vật chất để mà hát xoan có điều kiện để thể hiện cách đầy đủ những cái nội dung giá trị nghệ thuật của nó và trở thành hoạt động thường xuyên hàng năm trong các cái dịp lễ hội truyền thống đặc biệt là gắn với cái dỗ thủ hùng vương cái việc đầu tư phát triển rồi gìn giữ những cái bản sắc riêng trong văn hóa đất tổ trong đó đặc biệt là hát xoan sẽ được coi là một trong những cái đề án không chỉ có ý nghĩa mặt xã hội mà còn có ý nghĩa kinh tế tạo ra cái nguồn tài nguyên để phục vụ cho cái phát triển du lịch và đưa du lịch trở thành ngành tế mũi nhọn tỉnh phú thọ Swan singing, it is really a live artistic museum.